Islam, in a nutshell, is, is obedience to God, kindness to humanity, and standing up for justice. This is what the hadith of souls of the Prophet. But how do you live that? Now today's topic, it's not like it's not like Today's topic is how do we prepare for Imam Mahdi's reappearance? A lot of us focus on the personality of Imam Mahdi, but who did he focus on? Let me ask you, who did Imam Mahdi focus on? Attendance? <laughs> of who's going to be his helpers? <laughs> who did Imam Mahdi focus on? Allah. Allah. Of course. As he said, total submission to God. So the secret of life, the secret of becoming Imam Mahdi's helpers, is submitting yourself to God. Now, Islam, for us, is seems to be like this book, this religion, it's like in the corner, it's not a part of our lives. Why? Because Allah is not part of our lives. Allah is secondary. We don't even think of God. We think of the personality. So for example, we made the topic today, Imam Mahdi. Everybody gets excited. Yes, Allah. We like that. But then we start to say, okay, the topic today is about Allah. Yeah, that's nice. You know, it's like the most important thing in our lives is Allah. And there's a beautiful ayah, chapter 5, verse 54. Allah says, O you who believe. Now this is talking about the helpers of Imam Mahdi, this ayah. Chapter 5, verse 54. If you guys want to keep notes, since you guys are in an academic environment, keep points. I'm going to give you a few ayats of Quran. Keep a point of it. Go back and read it. Understand these ayats of Quran. It's so beautiful. Allah says in what is chapter 5, what is that surah? Yes, what's the name of that surah? Al-Ma'idah. Very important. You should know that name of the surahs. Okay. Allah says, O you who believe, whoever from amongst you turns their back from his religion, he's talking about us, O you who believe. A lot of us as Muslims, we've turned our backs toward this religion. We've turned our backs to God. And if you look at Richmond Hill, there must be, I don't know, 50,000 Muslims? 40,000? A lot of Muslims. It's shocking. Everywhere you go, everybody's as the name of Ali, Fatima, they've changed it to Al or Bob or whatever the names are now. But they've forgotten Allah, the blessings that we have from Allah. So Allah says, whoever of you will believe, you've turned your back to that religion, don't worry. Allah will bring another group of people. Allah, He shall love them. And they shall love Him. Look at the importance of this ayat. This ayat of the helpers of humanity. Allah says, I will love these people, and they will love me. They will be humble before the believers. They will be mighty against the unbelievers. They shall strive hard in Allah's way, and they shall not fear censure. What is fearing of censure? You're not scared of anything. If, they're gonna, if you stand up, for example, in the middle of the UN and says, this country, the United States, or Canada, is oppressing the children of Gaza by not supporting them, giving them food and water, you wouldn't be scared. Or if you said the people's rights in Canada are being stripped just because they, they, they actually have an appreciation for what Iran has done to help against the oppression of the Shah in 1979, what's wrong with that? Okay, yeah, no one is perfect, but why can't you support a country, support a, a group of people? people of your background. For example, you follow us of Ahlul Bayt. You know, in 1979, when the revolution happened, a lot of people, a lot of us, maybe we haven't been born, but okay, they were, they were scared. The world was scared of the followers of Ahlul Bayt. Why? Why would they be scared of you? Because you're tough, muscle, big muscles? No, because of your belief, because of your faith. You were not scared of death. You worship God, you want to help humanity, kindness to humanity. You want to stand up for justice in this world. How many of us actually do that? You may say, well, I never get the chance. Every day we get the chance. You may see a person being picked on in university because she wears a scarf. Or someone who uh, of another religion, for example. Some uh, Hindu girl has a dot on her head. The, the boys and the girls make fun of her. What do you do to protect her? If you know this guy, Noam Chomsky, he's become a powerful orator, a speaker, and he's really affecting the world in a positive way, saying about the problems of this world. What does he say? He said, I changed. When I was young, I saw injustice and I didn't say anything. 
I saw something wrong and I didn't say anything. I said, never again will I allow that to happen. We just mourn Muharram and suffer the, what happened in Karbala. We should say the same thing. Never again will we allow this to happen. But how will we get that in our hearts? What do we need? What do we need to change us? What do we need to make, make us to help us, Imam Ali? Allah is saying, Allah will bring a group of people and not scared of anything. Of the, their, this is wajhullah, this is the face of Allah. He gives to whom He pleases, and Allah is ample in giving. So who makes you like that? Allah. Who's made you successful in life, good in education, have a house, a home? Who's helped your brothers and sisters? Everything that you have, Allah. Allah is the ample giver. He's the one who gives us. Now what do we need to do is become righteous, become better human beings. As I told you, Islam is obedience to God. And what does Allah want from us? Nothing more than just to do good for our own selves. Kindness to humanity, help your brothers and sisters. Your old lady across the street that can't shovel the snow, help her. Help humanity and then stand up for justice. Now chapter 2 verse 177, you should know this, I, at least the gist of it, because this Prophet has said, will make you a perfect human being if you live this ayat. I'm going to give you the gist of this ayat. The ayat is, it is not righteousness that you turn your face right or left towards the east and west. That's not righteousness. That's not being pious. What is east and west today? East is say, Mecca. West is the money. I don't know. We can take it in different ways. Turn your face right and left when you pray. Whatever it may symbolize, that's not righteousness. Being a title of a Muslim, is that righteous? That's just a title. Allah doesn't look at that. He says, what do I look at? Where he said, righteousness is you believe in Allah. Amana billahi. Wal yawm al you believe in the day of judgment. Why is belief important? Because you can do all these good deeds and you have no belief, you can mess up. So for example, if you don't believe in the day of judgment, you don't think you're accountable. I don't think I'm accountable. I can do whatever I want, I can get away with it, especially in our times. If you know how to rig the system, if you have a good lawyer, you can win any case, even though you're guilty. So you have to have a belief in the Day of Judgment. Allah is watching us. The angels, the books. We have to give out of love for God, wealth. We have to give away money, charity, help people. Today, Afghanistan is freezing. You know, there's children without coats. What have we done? There's so many groups of people that have Jewish clothing businesses. Some of our parents have that. And they don't even use the coats because they sell these clothes to Africa generally. So the coats are kind of like redundant. They don't need it. Why can't we say, let's get a container, send it to Afghanistan, and send it to the villages that need coats, and give it out for free. Let's do it. Let's think of these ideas. There's one sister who's here today. She's going to Guatemala. You may say, why Guatemala? That's not a Muslim country. Yes, it is. The whole earth is a Muslim country, meaning submitting to God. She's going to help the poor. She's going to help them with health care. How many of us are doing that? And then she tried to raise money in the community. She said, ah, Guatemala. That's not the Muslims. Those guys are, you know, Christian. No, they're humans. They're brothers and sisters in creation. And this is a beautiful thing that she's doing. There's another sister who comes here. She went to Congo. She went to this group called WIPA. She's helping people. They are doing something. What makes them inspired to do that? This ayat that was trying to explain that they give the love of Him. They have this love of God. If you have the love of Allah, everything will come into place. They perform their promises. They are patient. Allah says, these are the ones who are true and they guard against them the evils of this world. Now, we, we may say, I want to be Imam Mehdi's helper. How do we prepare for him? Well, if your goal in your life is career, money, and you want to make a dent on this earth. I know they're making a movie about Steve Jobs how he has a positive influence on in this world. Well, his, work, his biological father was Muslim, but that didn't help him very much. That's not an impact on his life. What made him succeed? Well, he was driven by maybe his desire, his money, his, his goals of trying to do something great. And he was benefiting financially. And he ended up dying with billions of dollars sitting in the bank with his people in the world that needed that help. And then he's, he's let his wife and children here. It was great. It's allowed. But are they going to do something about this problem of this world? Or if your goal in your life is to help the world for Allah, now those deeds are going to succeed. That will make the world a powerful place. I feel Bakr Sadr is explaining this. It's all your intention. 
You can do the same deed as somebody else, but if your intention is for the pleasure of God, for the betterment of society, to help the world, that's the impact of the helpers of your man. Well, if your goal is selfishness, then when Yazid comes and questions you, and Muawiyah comes and questions and offers you a bribe, and you wonder, why did the Muslims, during the time after the Prophet died, get all of them get bought? Everybody got bought. And if you look at the world today, you speak to people, this is everybody has a price tag. Sister, I offer you... Assalamu alaikum, brother. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum, brother. How are you? Good, thank you. Okay, so if you're doing things for the betterment of society, for the pleasure of God, you've succeeded. Now, we have to start thinking different. How do we change ourselves? Sister, um, you've done a great thing yesterday. What did you do yesterday for the betterment of society? Yes, so you did something beautiful yesterday. You helped out the homeless, feeding them. Who did you really help? Well, I did it for the pleasure of God as well. Beautiful. You did it for the pleasure of God. You fed all these poor people who had no food. Who did you really help? Yourself. Who said that? Excellent answer. You don't, we don't realize, but when we do good to others, you feel it. And I saw when you were there, you felt the pleasure and happiness. Feel good hanging out with these homeless guys and we think it's a problem. No, they're so happy, they're so caring, and they're so loving. When you show humanity kindness, I'm telling you, look out, you will see this world change. And when we show anger and animosity to people, what happens? They fight back even tougher. So, kindness to humanity is a beautiful thing. But how do we do that? Allah says in Surah Shams, How do you purify yourself? I think to first start reflecting on the negative aspects of the self and then individually removing one by one. Okay, so her approach is to focus on the negative mistakes of yourself. Is you should make an account of yourself every day and make look at all the good things and the bad things you do. Good. And then get rid of the bad things one by one. Someone who looks at the glass half empty may say, yeah, I agree with that. Or someone says, glass half full, give me a different version of the same answer. Something more positive. Look at your day and say, okay, what are the good things I should have done? Good, good things that I do. Look at the good things also. What happens to us is, when we look at negative, we say, I'm not good enough. I can't be the mom and helper. We drown in misery. But if you look at the negative, it's no, I'm going to do something right. I'm going to do something positive. Then it's fine. So, okay, this is dirty, I'm going to clean it. That's what she's trying to explain. I, she says, I see something wrong in myself, I'm going to fix that problem. If I'm impatient, I'm going to try to be patient. Allah says, the next part of Surah Psalms, verse 10, وَقَدْ كَابَ مَنْ دَسَاهَ This is the sad part. And indeed, one fails to corrupt it. How do you corrupt your soul, brother, to more? By not paying attention to it and not collecting it here. Okay, not paying attention. Something that's very important in society today is a lot of people don't care. They don't give a damn. It's called apathy. I don't care about anybody but myself. Yeah, even myself. I don't care. Those people are hard to change. Because when you don't care, when you become apathetic, you don't. What what can you do for this person? Scare them about death? Because a lot of people change when they. They're dying. Actually, my father was in the house for a while. I'm telling you, I haven't seen so many believers in God in my life of non-Muslims. I'm in the house where the whole floor is a group of people dying. Everybody believes in God. From the nurses, from the doctors, to every patient. One guy screaming because, um, funny, my father was like almost going and then God did it. And the nurse came and she was saying, lie, 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 lie. This is a nurse. And this is a Canadian you know, environment. She's saying, lie, lie, lie. And then, my cousin was there saying, Muhammad Rasulullah, it's so loud. I said, wow, this feels good. The neighbor came and says, hey, we're trying to sleep here. Can't you leave me alone? But I told him to calm down. Shh, patient, they are trying to sleep. The next day, I tried to speak to him. He said, look, I'm dying too. And I, 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 know, I believe in God, though my parents didn't. 
I said, why do you believe in God? He said, look, look at death, look at life. I can feel God. I said, this guy, all he wanted was some attention. So I said, what do you want in life? I could have been angry with him, whipped him back the way he yelled at us. Because, you know, at that time, my father needed help. And the lady came from nowhere. Uh, she's from Ivory Coast and was seeing a lot of it. It was great. So I said, what would you like? He said, I would love Coca-Cola. That's it? He said, yeah, I would love for Coca-Cola. I can't even go and get it. I said, I'll get it for you. And then we talked the next day. I could have been not angry with him, but I tried to avoid that. I tried to be patient. And I said, what would you like again before you leave? I said, I would love another Coca-Cola. That's all he wanted. And I tell you, this guy changed. His wife is actually from Israel, Jewish, but she believes in God. He was an atheist, but he believes in God. And so when you see kindness humanity, you see his behavior change. He was so kind before he left. So what did I do different? I didn't corrupt my soul. I tried to think. I didn't do haram things. For example, if I'm uh, drunk, I would have gotten angry right back, right? So that corrupts my soul. I wouldn't do that. So these things corrupt, protect you from corruption. There's greed, there's money. You guys go to school, you don't realize everything is driven by money. You go to, in Canada, I was first amazed. I asked my, te my son's teacher, who was, uh, when he was in uh, fifth grade, so what, what is your goal? He said, I want these kids to get a good job, make a lot of money. That's your goal in life. <laughs> That's your goal, to, for all the children to grow up to make a lot of money. That corrupts the souls, because they don't realize they're not teaching them to do good with that money, help the world, do something greater than, say, the wealthy billionaires of the Steve Jobs of the world have done. Okay, now let's talk about the corruption of souls. Let's talk about us for a second. Let's talk about me. Imam Zain al-Abidin one day was with his companion, and they were looking at, down at the desert of Arafat in, during Hajj, and they saw thousands of people. Now, some people have heard the story that he was next to the Kaaba and he saw people doing tawaf. And this is a story where he saw he was looking down, saw a thousand people, and he said, Look at all these Muslims. Wow, look at this. He says, I don't see anybody. What are you talking about? He says, Look, I see all these people. He says, Look. And he put his hand in front of his eyes, and basically he saw a few Muslims, and the rest were dogs, and donkeys, and pigs. And he saw the reality of humanity, the greediness, the stinginess. We see it when we look in the mirror, but we think, no, I'm okay. I'm not so bad. I'm great. I'm a follow by the bait. Come on. How could I be wrong? Well, this is in chapter 2, verse 62. Forget about titles. All you believe, all you Jews or Christians or Sabians, if you believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment, and you do good deeds, then you have success. It doesn't matter what title you have. It's what you do, what you believe. So what do we need to look at? How do we need to change? Chapter 2, verse 170, about righteousness, becoming a positive person by doing good, believing in and doing right. That shows you how to become a perfect human being. What do we need as human beings? Because I was talking to my son yesterday, and he says, you know what? I only need a lot. I says, you're right. Allah could have also said, forget all the prophets, forget all the books, forget everything. You only need me. That's true. We only need him. But why did he send us examples? Why did he send his prophets and imams? Why did he send his role models? Why did he send his parents as role models? Why did he send us that? Because humanity was given something else in their heart. Other than the need of God, he says you need, you need humanity. Because how are you going to care for humanity if you don't need humanity? The first thing he says, you want to become Muslim? What do you need to say? Sister Akima. You want to become Muslim? What do you have to say? Laila, Laila. But what is it? But you, uh, say it. Religion, the God, religion, the Prophet. Excellent. You say, la, 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 la. But you're not a Muslim yet. You have to say Muhammad Rasulullah. And even better, Ali and Waliullah. But at least Muhammad Rasulullah. Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what is Allah telling you? You need the Prophet. You need role models. You need perfect examples how to live. The book is there. But who were the Quran technicians? The Prophets and Ahlul Bayt. They live the Quran. They act every eye of the Quran in their life. So they are role models now. Allah says, you need those perfect examples. From Imam Ali to Imam Mahdi, they are examples. When Imam Mahdi reappears, this world will be a different place. We're going to see an example of purity. Some people look at it as an altruistic human being. 
cares for everybody. You know, the, some of the companions of my said, well, these were bad people, let's kill them. He said, no, don't do that. For example, there's a hadith when, when he reappears, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the people will be so upset at what has happened there. They're gonna say, let's kill everybody. He said, no, you cannot do that. You should not do that. Where do we get that example in history? When the prophet conquered what? And he didn't kill anybody. He didn't harm anybody. He actually forgave everybody. Yes? You said that? Mecca, excellent. When they conquered Mecca, they conquered it with peace. Did he hurt anybody? No. He forgave everybody, including Abu Sufyan and Moabi and the whole bunch of them, right? And they were freed slaves because they actually had to be enslaved. They were free. Everybody was free. Well, what is Allah teaching us? Through the Prophet, we are going to forgive humanity who has hurt us. Someone who's hurt you, forgive them. Because you want Allah to forgive you, you need to forgive back. Kindness to humanity is going to be there, but justice will also be there. We need to care for those who are oppressed in the world. Okay, any questions? I will ask you a question. How do you prepare for Imam Mahdi and in your life, what are you always preparing for? In your whole life, what are you always preparing for? Philosophically, in, our, in my life, I should be prepared for any adversities that are to come. Okay, good. Sister, you had an answer? Excellent answer. She's preparing for death. For the day of judgment. That's how you become Imam Mahdi Zalafar. When you're going in front of Allah, remember, Allah is the most important thing. How are you going to say, well, uh, I was waiting for Imam Mahdi to do good? No. Prepare the road now so you, when he comes, everything is there. The roads are there. You're going to say to Allah, I did the kindness to Imam You fed the homeless. You went to Guatemala. You went to Africa. You went to Asia. You went to everywhere. You went down the road. Went to help the ind indigenous people of even of Canada, the Indians of Canada. How oppressed are they? They're being intoxicated. They're given all the alcohol they want in the U.S. The same. They're even allowed to have drugs. And what do they have in their homes? Gambling resorts. What's going on? They're being oppressed. And they don't even know it. So we have to help. Okay, prepare for death. But a harmonious and well-rounded development may result in a perfect human being. But what does the Quran say about Prophet Ibrahim? He was made an imam, you know that, right? And so was his, his kids. Imam, who was the prophet after Ibrahim? Ismail and Ishaq. They were also prophets and imams. Allah says, and when we tried Ibrahim with certain words and he fulfilled them, he said, surely I will make you an imam of men. Allah says in that chapter 2, verse 124, Ibrahim alayhi salam said, and what about my family? And my offspring? He said, my covenant does not include the unjust, said he. Now, it does not include all of his children of, of Ibrahim, including all of us, because we're all coming from that background, okay? Ibrahim, alayhi salam, Prophet Ibrahim stood alone fighting against unbelievers. It was then when Allah called him an imam, a leader and a model for others to follow. Imam Ali, a perfect man, since all the human values that he had was maximized in his life. And he lived in a harmonious manner, just like Ibrahim, like all the prophets. Now you may say, what do you mean to be against unbelievers? No, the atheist is not an unbeliever to be a brother and sister. What is an unbeliever? It's us, it's our own hypocrisy. Being a monophic is the worst unbeliever in this, in this world. Those are what the Quran talks about, those really bad people, are the monophic. Look at Surah Monophic Quran. We are talking that we're great Muslims, but then we go out and cheat and steal and harm people and affect people in a wrong way and not help. We have to think differently. So if you look at people stopped reading Quran, I don't know when, maybe a thousand years ago, because most people don't read Quran anymore. How many of us read Quran? Oh, we go to Madrasa. What do you read? I don't know, Alif Bata. Yeah, other than the Arabic. Do you speak Arabic? Some of us may not, right? Well, uh, in Ramadan, I read the whole Quran. But do you live it? Do you understand what you read? No. We've forgotten the Quran. And other than that, we've also forgotten the tafsir of Quran. Who can give me another book that's the tafsir of Quran? By the Imam. By the Imam. Most people don't know this. It's a very famous book. Everybody knows this book. 
Everybody probably has it to fall about and bathe in their house. Naju Balaga. Imam Ali is teaching us the understanding of Quran. Listen to his first sermon. He's explaining the Quran to us. He's explaining a lot to us. We take this book as, ah, it's not important. Yeah, it's a hadith book. Hadith books are not perfect. Only the Quran is. So we have to be careful. Everything you read doesn't mean it's correct, it's right from Allah. It should match the Quran. If it goes against the Quran, reject it. Okay? But the majority of it is beautiful. So if you look at this beautiful book, how many of us have paid attention to anything in Najib Allah? Can someone tell me anything they've read in Najib Allah? sermon number 53 about the Imam Ali's advice to Malik al how to lead, how to be a leader. That's not, that's not important. Let's focus on the self, purify the self. It's important to first purify yourself and get near to God. But when you purify yourself, what are you going to do with that? Go on a mountain and pray like the monks or an abid, just pray all the time? No. You've got to live that message of purification. So Imam is trying to explain to my Oster, go and be kind to the constituents. Don't be arrogant to anyone. Care for them. Want more for them than for yourself. Forget yourself. Now you've lived in that purified process and now living it. Anybody's traveled with a group of people? You want to be the helpers of my man, right? You're gonna have to travel in groups. Anybody has? Okay, anybody been to the camp? What do you do in the camp? You help others. You have to cook, you have to clean, you have to clean the bathrooms. And then you begin to see the reality of human beings. What do you see? Selfishness. People go to the bathroom, they're even clean. People go everywhere, and there's nothing happening. People are eating as much as food they can, not sharing. Problems upon problems. It's very dangerous when you're traveling with people. Allah's trying to teach us, you're purified, now show it to me. How much are you kind to humanity? Your friend doesn't have a blanket in the camp. Do you give one of yours? You have a pillow and you have an extra something to use. Do you share that? You have extra clothes. I remember one one of the years when I had camping, one of the states we went to, all the luggage was lost for two weeks. Everybody began to share their shirts with these people, their clothes, their hijabs. It was beautiful. You began to see caring and sharing to humanity. Your mom started telling you, mother left, this is how we should be. We should Care for humanity. Help others. Okay. Someone tell me some of the signs Imam Mahdi coming. Because what's the use of talking about Imam Mahdi coming if he's not coming around the corner? Someone give me the signs. Anyway. Yes. Okay. Core of the earth will die. That means there's going to be like a nuclear war going on there? Because I can't think of anything other than a, a disease, something out of a war. They're, like 2012. Yeah, it's possible. It's very possible. This hadith that says a third, two thirds of the world will be wiped out. Yeah. I don't think Imam Mahdi is going to come and guide a big graveyard. So, actually, I heard one speaker from England talk like that. He says it doesn't make sense that. Well, the whole world will be dead. So he's going to come, he's going to lead a graveyard of people? Come on, he's not going to do that. He's not going to be in charge of a cemetery. He's going to be in charge of a humanity. Okay, so there is a possibility a lot of deaths will come. But what hasn't come and that's very soon to come? They say some signs have come. Like men will dress like women, women will dress like men. We live in Toronto, we see that. Actually, we see them bicycle riding like that. It's okay, we live in that society. So many of these signs have come. To be a believer, it's like, 
It's like st it's walking on a, a blade of a knife in the society today. It's so hard to stay as a believer, to hold up to your hijab, to be caring for loving for your man. It's not easy. Some of the signs is one of the very important signs is there'll be enough to zaki as the Hassani Sayyid will be killed in the area of the Kaaba. That hasn't happened yet. And the other big sign is the Sufiani will rise. A Sufiani is going to do something horrible and kill many people. It's going to be a disaster. And it's going to come in the area of Syria. So that has already begun. The revolts in the concrete of North Africa. That's already begun. Now, that's happened in imperialism before. So it doesn't mean it's today. But you begin to see what's happening today in Mali, for example. All these parts of Africa, of North Africa, you're seeing a lot of things happen. Algeria, you're seeing so many things happen. You know, Egypt, so many things are happening. There will be war. They say parts of Syria will be destroyed by gases. They say war of Russia will take place against Muslims. There will be Chinese people also in the Middle East. You go and you know, to Iraq, there's Chinese people there, there's Russians there. They're helping dig the oil. They're helping. But they're also benefiting financially. There will be a loud voice in the sky. There's a lot of things like that you heard. Today, what's the voice in the sky that you know about? A mobile phone calling people. <laughs> we don't know exactly what the signs mean. These are signs that explain the coming. But it doesn't mean anything about how it's going to affect you. Yeah, we know things are coming close. I remember I went to Iran in 1994 and we met some scholars. And they said that there's a Maraj named Ahit al Bahlul who met someone in Syria whose name was Sufyan bin Uthman and he checked his genealogy and went down to Yazid and he said, this is the guy, it could be the guy. And that was 1994 and that's when this guy was a corporal in his 20s. That was over, almost 20 years ago, right? So what about today? Where is he now, general? Is this the Sufyan? Maybe he gets you excited, now what are you gonna do about it? Be one of the 313 helpers of Imam Mahdi? Everybody loved his 313 helpers of Imam Mahdi. Do you know what happened to the 313 helpers of the Battle of Badr after the Prophet died? How many of them helped Imam Ali? Let me tell you, it wasn't 313. Some of them abandoned Imam Ali and saved the Prophet. Can you imagine the tragedy that you saw the truth in the help of God? It's like the people when they crossed with Prophet Musa and then they started worshipping idols as soon as they got to the other side. It's happening to us today. We're given this religion in our hands. And we're abandoned it. And we're worshiping the idols of today. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's your future husband. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's your education, your career. That's not the help us Imam Mahdi. The help us of Imam Mahdi have become selfless human beings. They become altruistic. They love humanity. They care for everybody. They love humanity for the sake of Allah. They do everything for Hubbullah, like the Ahlul Bayt have done in Quran, that explains how they fed people. One time someone comes in the masjid and says to the community in Medina, I am hungry, can anyone feed me? No one could feed this poor guy. Is there poor themselves? He not only says, I'll feed you. They told the Prophet, I'll feed him. It's okay. They bring him home, and he doesn't have food himself for his family. So he says, it didn't tell Sayyidah Fatima anything that he's coming. So they get home and it says, well, what do we do? We only have enough food for one. So okay, let's put Hassan and Hussein to sleep. They took Sayyidah Fatima and she went and they turned off the lights and they gave food to the man and Imam Ali was sitting next to him. So the man thought, okay, I'm eating, Imam Ali is eating fine. The next day the Prophet said, what happened? He said, what did you do? And then they realized Imam Ali was not eating, he didn't have food but he fed another person. Who could do that in life? How many of us can give others food and not eat ourselves? Who teaches you that? Having a child once, maybe one day we may have a child in life, some of us have, some of us don't. Adopting, giving your own food to your child, let them eat even though you don't have food. I've only seen that from mothers. I'm a father, I haven't seen that yet. Maybe my father did that, I haven't done that. So I've seen my wife sacrifice for her child and not eat and make sure the child eats. Love her parent, her children so much. Allah's trying to teach us, you want to be guided? Live like your mothers have lived for you in terms of giving for humanity. These are signs for us. Now the signs of the help of humanity, their bodies are, will be different 
where their hearts and their heartbeats will be like one. How much unity do we have? Your brother is family from Iraq. Sister is family from Pakistan. Sister family from East Africa. Brother's family is from China. Do we love each other as we should, as the help of humanity will? As humanity will one day? Do our heartbeats beat as one? That we cry when you cry? And we're happy when you're happy? These are special people. Imam Jafar has said about the general traits of Imam Mahdi's helpers. They shall be tougher than stones. Because I know some of you guys go work out, eat a lot of protein, and do a lot of exercises. You have a gym downstairs, some of you are exercising. Excellent, you're building your body, physically, spiritually, mentally. Imam Jafar Sadiq said, they are burning lamps and their hearts are like glowing beacons. Their slogan will be, O Avenger of Imam Hussein. They're going to avenge the injustice in this world and do right. These are the ones who seek Allah's pleasure. This is Bihar Anwar, tradition number 82. The Prophet prophesies that when our Qaim rises, he will establish himself. Allah will gather people from the east and the west. These people will come together in one place in the, time, in the same manner as leaves gather in the autumn. So the secret of everything I said today is what? Anybody's been to a perfume store? And you don't see that in America, right? You see like, uh, what store do you go to for perfume? The pharmacy? What is the pharmacy? Shopper's. Shopper's Drug Mart. That's right here, my perfume. You go to the Middle East, there's perfume stores. You just smell perfume. What's the most important thing in the perfume store, sister? The smell, the fragrance. Excellent. Not the advice of the guy. Not the bottle, how beautiful it looks. It's the fragrance. What is the fragrance of life? There's a famous poet named Saadi. He said, the reality of the musk lies in the scent, not in the perfumer's advice. The reality of our lives lies in what? What is the fragrance of life? What is the life that you have in your soul? What is that? What is the fragrance of life? Who has an answer to the question? One of the bus. What is the fragrance of life? What's the most important thing of life? Well, following the sense of God. Excellent. Following Allah. Worshipping Allah. This is what Islam is about. This is what the help of Imam Mahdi is about. They can take anything because of this love of God. So remember the ayat I gave before that Allah will love them and they will love Allah? Let's go back to the tafsir of Quran, which is throughout the books we see, but the Ahlul Bayt have given us, for example, Nanjur Balada. Imam Ali discusses about Allah. And for example, he says, God is the first, while he is, he is also being the last. He's being simultaneously the manifest and the hidden. Who knows that ayat of Quran, Surah Hadith, verse 3? Excellent. And Imam Ali continues, his, his, his priority over time and number, his pre-eternity is not temporary, and his unity is not a number. His supremacy, his authority, his self-sufficiency, his creativeness, that attendance to one affair does not prevent him from attending other people's affairs. He's beginning to explain to us about who is Allah. Allah explains himself in the Quran, and Imam Ali explains what Allah is trying to tell us. Now, everything is associated with unity is deficient except him. Imam Ali says in Sermon 65. What do you mean? Everything associated with unity is deficient except him. It's explained that he, this meaning of this last sentence is that it states that everything except the divine essence is limited, except the one. We are limited. Our thinking of Allah is limited. That's why we get bored. We yawn at the first talk of Allah. We say, Allah, what when the yawn start? Oh, wow. you know, fall asleep at prayer time. You're entering the greatest example of your life, connecting to God. You have faster internet access than anyone you would think of. Infinite times, okay? Allah is hearing. You're reading Quran, you're talking to Allah, and He's talking back to you. It's explained that, that everything for which another of its kind is conceivable is limited. When you can conceive of something, you just limit it. 
Because our minds are limited. We're limited human beings. So when you can conceive of something, you think of something, you're limiting it. So for example, but this is not true of Allah. The unity of His divine essence, for Allah's unity lies in His greatness and His infinite, for which a like, a second, an equal match is not conceivable. I'm telling you, Allah's Abdul Wari, closer to than your love to your He's with you, living with you, worshiping. You see, see you worshiping Him. He sees your worship. He sees all that you do. You're struggling. Your sister was in struggles. He's, he's there to help you. Your mother's in struggles. He's there to help you. You know, they, uh, we were talking the other day. Einstein believes in a God that just created the universe and left us alone. How unjust is that? So we can go kill each other? Allah's there with us everywhere. And Imam is trying to explain that He's with us. Do you want to be the helpers of my Mahdi? Focus on Allah. And when you focus on Allah, when you'll find obedience to God, then you start showing the kindness to humanity. And struggling to fight for people's justice rights. Yes, there were the homeless feeding program. There was, there was a big protest outside, outside the homeless shelter, saying, we don't have money. Life is expensive. Rent is too expensive. We cannot survive. When you get old, you don't even get enough money to live. Not even pay the rent and food, you die. They don't know how people survive. You know, if you wanted to go to a, a nursing home, you know how much it costs? If you're poor, you can't go. You need at least $1,600 to pay a month to a nursing home. How do these poor people, when they get old, can afford that? They can't. So what happens? They go to the homeless shelter, and they end up dying on the streets. Is this the system of justice in this world? And what are we doing? Just warming our houses, a lot of heat, and children outside and love to eat. So, therefore, we find Allah and being appreciative and worshiping is, is worthy of being worshipped, it begins to go into play. And when you start worshiping Allah and living that in your life, Allah begins to explain who you are in the Quran. Chapter Hadith, Surah Hadith, verse 12. Allah says, Yawma tarul mu'mineen wa mu'midat yasa nurun bayna Anyone know this ayah? What does that mean? That means on that day, you'll see faithful men and faithful women. They'll have light running before them. And on their right hand, there will be good news for you this day. Gardens beneath which rivers flow to abide therein, that is a grand achievement. How will you achieve that? Worshiping God, you become an altruistic human being, loving humanity, and fighting for people's rights now. Chapter same uh, 59 verse 9. Allah explains something about those people who got that light during the time of the people of Medina. They were the Ansars. They were selfless human beings. They gave their homes. They gave their food to others, like the Habib. They gave the companions gave everything. They gave more to the others than they kept for themselves. They didn't care about themselves. Allah says about them in chapter. 59 verse 9, and those who made their abode in the city and in the faith before them, love of those who have fled to them, and they love the Muhajirs who fled to them, and do not feed, they don't find, do not find in their hearts a need of what they are given. They say, I don't need this stuff that I have. They prefer others and they afflict poverty on themselves, and they are preserved from being cheap in their cheapness and their selfishness. They're preserved from that. They don't have that. These are the successful ones. Now, you may think that this is a great example of people who live like the Ahlul Bayt, like Surah Dahar. Who knows Surah Dahar? The Ahlul Bayt, where they gave their food, for example, for three days, they fasted, but they kept giving away their food to the captives. You know that, right? Who knows Surah Dahar? You know, sister? Know the story. Okay. Allah says, and they gave food out of love for him to the poor, as you did yesterday to the homeless, to the orphans, and to the captive. And they say, Inama not imukum the watch illah. So we we feed you only for Allah's sake. For we don't want any reward or thanks. This is how we become ready. 
You want to prepare for my ministry appearance? You want to prepare for the day of judgment? You want to be the helpers? Let's start working and start preparing yourself. Some of us have gone through so much tragedy, problems, wrong marriages, divorces, you name it. People, deaths, orphans, you have so many problems. Problem after problem. Who's always been there to help you? Allah. How could we not give back? Now there's others who are suffering more than us. We need to help them. And there's people whose rights are being stripped and they cannot say anything or do anything. We need to help them. Today in Bahrain, there's still a problem. Today in Congo, there's still problems. Today, any country in the world, there's poverty, there's still problems. We need to help fix these problems. We have the ability to eat and work and have good education. Let's help others who don't. And it doesn't have to be the giant projects. It could be the, the old little old lady helping you across the street, giving your bus in the morning when you're taking a train to school, letting the bus seat or the train seat give it to someone else. Holding a door open for someone. There's, there's a beautiful book, An Elixir of Love, by, by Rajab Ali Khayyar. He was explaining that he met a person who met Imam Mahdi all the time. And this person was a locksmith. And one old, old lady came to a poor lady and says, I want to sell my lock. Can you buy it for me? And he says, uh, well, how much is it worth? He says, it's, she said, it's worth eight, but no one's buying it for eight to one. So can you buy it for two? He said, no. It's not worth two. I'm going to give you eight. I'll buy it for eight. Fairness. That's all you have to do. This person, right next to him was Imam Mehdi. says, I visit this man every day because he's like this. It's kindness. It's justice. How many of us are like that? Look, I can sell you something for worth less. All right. I can buy something cheaper than it's worth. Why not? You know, Instead of being fair. Being kind. Someone says, you go to the store, give a $50 bill, and you get back change of $100. How many say, oh, I'm going to keep this one? And I'm going to say, look, you gave me too much money. It's a constant trial on us. When we see things in, I'm not right, how many of us do something about it? Now, let's end here. I don't want it to be a, only a, me speaking. Anyway, I would like you to say something. Some of you say something. What are you, you going to do different? Just here. Besides taking attendance. Well, I'm going to try to make it different. Help. We have to leave, right? The class ends soon? In, in four, five, uh, three, four minutes. Three, four minutes, okay. Go ahead. Um, try, try any small act I can do. Beautiful. Like what? Like, um, like, um, like holding the door for someone. Yes. Sometimes it's so small, like your mom washed the dishes using the dishwasher. How many of us take the dishes out of the dishwasher and put it in the cabinet? How many of us take the recycle in the garbage and go put it outside and like, give your dad a break. Little things. How many of us clean our rooms? How many of us I invite someone else to clean? How many of us leave on time? Basic little thing. It's so small. There's a beautiful movie called Pay It Forward. About a little boy who gave to three others and just continued and the world became a better place. This is what Islam is about. But it's not 30. It's infinite the number of chances to do good in this universe. Just do it. And we will be the other just the pureness of purifying yourself, worshiping God, kindness to humanity, and standing up for justice in this world. So, uh, uh.